we present the Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis Show. <laughs> Brought to you by Chesterfield. Sound off for Chesterfield. Get something new, something no other cigarette has. Chesterfield mildness plus no unpleasant aftertaste. By Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. And by Dentine, the gum with breathtaking flavor. And Beeman's Pepsin, the gum that's great to chew and good for your digestion, too. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our Master of Ceremonies. Hi, folks. This is Dean Martin. Well... There's no sense in trying to kid ourselves. Every week has a Friday in it, and everybody in our little crew seems to be ready and raring to go, with the exception of my brush-headed partner. Seems he had a little trouble at home this afternoon. He went out and started to spray the roses, which caused quite a bit of excitement. You see, the roses are his next-door neighbors. <laughs> well, until my friend gets here, supposing I slip in a fast course of who's sorry now. Sorry now, who's sorry now? Whose heart is aching for breaking its vow? Who's sad and blue? Who's crying too? Just like I cried over you. Right to the end. Just like a friend I tried to warn you somehow You had your way Now you must pay But I'm glad that you're sorry now Tried to warn you somehow. You had your way, but now you must pay. I'm glad that you're sorry now. Gentlemen, it becomes my great oh, pleasure. Oh, sorry now. Oh, sorry now. Whose back is broken from milking a cow? <laughs> Jerry, what is it, Jerry? Every time I introduce you, you never come out like a gentleman. What, I come out like a lady? <laughs> no, but I, I can suggest a few changes. Look at that haircut and that face. What's wrong with the face? I got a pimple. <laughs> Your face hasn't got a pimple. It is a pimple. <laughs> you listen here, Dean Martin. I may not be look... Yeah, listen here. <laughs> yeah, you listen here, Dean Martin. I may not be good looking, but I'm not very handsome either. <laughs> All of that for this. Look, Jerry, we can't continue. We can't continue this fight like this. We're partners. Yeah, well, that's another thing. I'm tired of the way you split up our salary. What more do you want? We split 50-50. Sure, but why should all the taxes come out of my head? <laughs> Jerry, you know, it all evens out in the end. Evens out? So how come you have an eight-car garage and I have to park my scooter in the cellar? <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned automobiles, Jerry. Good heavens, I finally said something that made him glad. <laughs> you see, tonight I thought we'd enact a scene showing the problems that traffic cops have with lady drivers. 
Oh, boy, hey, Dina, can I be the traffic cop? No, but you could be the lady driver. Me take the part of a lady driver? <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> All righty, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, Jerry and I would like to take you out on the highway and give you our impression of a meeting between a lady motorist and a policeman. Pull over to the side. Well, I guess you know why I stopped you. You were lonely. <laughs> Look, lady, you went through 12 red lights, 18 stop signs, side swiped five cars, and you've been driving on the wrong side of the road. Now, what do you got to say for yourself? Well, heavens to Betsy, none of us are perfect. <laughs> That's us. I'm giving you a ticket. I'm sorry, but I never accept things from strange men. Lady, don't tell me you've never been pinched. Well, yes, but never on an open highway. <laughs> Listen, I've been trying to catch up with you for 15 minutes. You're the lousiest driver I've ever seen. You hear me? Haven't you ever been a pedestrian? Let's leave religion out of this. Listen to me! I've had enough. I'm writing out a ticket. I'm afraid you'll have to forget about arresting me. I come from New York. Yeah? Well, in the first place, you happen to be driving in Los Angeles, and in the second place, I think you're out of your mind. If I wasn't out of my mind in the second place, I wouldn't drive in Los Angeles in the first place. <laughs> oh, get out of here! <laughs> all right, Jerry, now get yourself... Out of character and join us while we all sound off for Chesterfield. When making out your Christmas list, be sure you all remember this. For smoking pleasure at its best, here's the gift that leads the rest. Chesterfield, 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 Chesterfield. A Christmas carton of milder, milder Chesterfield. That's right! When you give Chesterfield for Christmas, you're giving the perfect gift for any smoker. Because Chesterfield has something no other cigarette has. Chesterfield mildness plus no unpleasant aftertaste. Ask your dealer to show you the beautiful Chesterfield Christmas card carton. This carton was designed with a double purpose in mind. To make a welcome holiday gift and a warm holiday greeting card as well. So drop in at your dealer's. And while you're there, shop around. You'll find he has lots of Christmas gifts. Something for everyone on your list. And don't forget now... Christmas time or any time. Sound off for Chesterfield. Chesterfield has something new no other brand can offer you. Mildness plus no aftertaste, no unpleasant aftertaste. Sound off for Chesterfield. Sound off for Chesterfield. Try a pack of Chesterfield. Do it. Folks, when we were in the middle of shooting our new picture, Sailor Beware, our boss, Mr. Hal Wallace, decided one spot in the picture needed a good love song. This decision was passed down through channels until it finally reached the talented hands of Mac David and Jerry Livingston, who locked themselves away for a few days, and when the master padlock was open, they were sitting there with a copy of a little number that we really liked. So let's see how you like it. Ricardo? <laughs> Has my heart felt a thrill like this? Never before. Never before. Never before has the whole world stood still like this. As I gaze at the face, I simply adore. After today, when they speak about paradise, 
I'll smile and I'll sing I've been there once or twice For this is that once in a lifetime The miracle of your kiss I've never loved like this Never In a lifetime, the miracle of your kiss. I've never loved like this, never Thank you. And now, since you've given me your listening ears, how about turning them over to Jimmy Wallington? Thank you, Dean. Ladies and gentlemen, the next time you suffer from pains of headache, uritis, or neuralgia, take Anison. You'll bless the day you heard of this incredibly fast way to relieve these pains. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician. And in this way, discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So the next time a headache strikes, take Anison for this wonderfully fast relief. Anison, A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison comes in handy boxes of 12 and 30. Economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. Get Anison at any drug counter. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce our guest of the evening. Hey, Dean, I won. Jerry, I thought I told you to wait in the cage. <laughs> In a cage. Listen here, Dean Martin. I'm just as big as you are, see? What's troubling you now? Every week we have a beautiful guest like Jane Wyman or Denise Darcel or Shelley Winters. She meets you first and I don't stand the ghost of a chance. Well, why not? Well, after they've seen Cheesecake, who wants chopped liver? <laughs> All right, Jerry, if you want to make the introduction, be my guest. Folks, our guest tonight is somebody real wonderful. It's really a great thrill for me to introduce the first lady of comedy, Miss Joan Davis. folks, and thank you, Jerome. <laughs> Gosh, Joan, you don't have to be so formal. You can call me what everyone else calls me. Please, I happen to be a lady. <laughs> you don't like me? I ain't what you expected. Well, frankly, I expected a man, not a stringless howdy doody. <laughs> <laughs> well, I still like you. In my opinion, we belong together like pork and beans, like bacon and eggs, like... Chicken and canned cranberry sauce. And, and you know something? What? I'm hungry. <laughs> Excuse me, Jay, but you haven't introduced me to our charming guest. Hey, Dean, do me a favor. You get all the dames. Leave this one for me. Uh, don't worry, Jerry. I'll make you look real good. Introduce me. Uh, oh, Joan, I'd like you to meet my partner, Dean Martin. He's married. <laughs> oh, how do you do, Mr. Martin? Hello, baby. <laughs> This is going to make me look good. <laughs> well, of course, just look at Dean. Tall, handsome, strong. Someday he'll grow ugly. But what can happen to you? 
<laughs> well, Jerry, it looks like you found yourself a soulmate after all. Gosh, maybe for once we can do a play where I'm the hero and get the girl. How about it, Joan? You and me? Okay, Fuzz Top. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pride that we present an original operatic melodrama entitled <laughs> The Curse of an Aching Heartburn. <laughs> Listen now as we hear the enchanting voice of our contralto, Miss Joan Davis. Gorgeous heroine A oh, what an awful mess I'm in For the mortgage has come due And I know not what to do If I wed the squire today He will carry me away Oy vey. To leave this little shack And the other little shack That's out in back <laughs> I am in desperate straits I have no money I have no food The squire has offered me furs and jewels But I laugh at him <laughs> Perhaps I am naive That's French for schnook <laughs> Soon he will be here for the rent. Well, hark, hark, someone approaches. I am the squire whose rents are much higher to prove with just bonus and you'll pay a bonus. I don't have much feeling for OPA ceiling cause under the table you'll pay that much more. I've come for my money or you'll be my honey. Unless you can pay up to me, you must play up. I'm sorry I picked you, but I must evict you. It's marriage or money and that is the score. Yes, I am the evil villain. Who knocks on my portal? <laughs> portal, I'm sorry. <Tis> I... <laughs> oh, the good humor man. <laughs> ah, me proud beauty. Come to me, Theodora. We shall kiss. Nay, never with lips that have touched liquor. I haven't had a drink. <laughs> but I just finished a fifth. <laughs> <laughs> and besides, my true love, Reggie Ridgway, will soon be here to save me. Maybe let me have a bandage. <laughs> Reggie, the squire and I are talking business. Oh, excuse me. I'll just sit here in the corner and bleed. <laughs> All right, Theodora. How about a kiss? You know, 
She don't even know you. Uh, Theodore is going to marry me. Tell him. Tell him you are promised to another. Another what? <laughs> oh, such hard questions. Ah, uh, listen, you two. <laughs> listen to me, you two. Either Theodora marries me, or I'll more close the 40s. <laughs> more close the 40s? <laughs> For a minute, I thought he was wrong. Theodora, you must pay the mortgage, or I shall carry you off in my Cadillac and take you to my mansion where you will be my wife, and handmaidens will dress you in mink, sable, and fine jewels. To the quick. Oh, Reggie, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean it. You must make a choice, Theodora. It is either me, the tall, handsome, and wealthy villain, or me, the poor, skinny, and ugly hero. <laughs> well, I shall marry Reggie Ridgeway, all American jerk. <laughs> Spoiled again. Theodora, I leave you now and forever. Goodbye, Theodora. I'm going out the door. Don't come back no more, for you are a snorer. I have made my choice as we rehearsed. I wish their parts were reversed. Curses, curses, spoiled again. And that's no lie. And that's no lie. And that's no lie. That's no lie. Let's, let's keep moving. We're targets up here. <laughs> and that's no lie. So, so it's good goodbye. goodbye. Well, folks, as the curtain falls on our operatic effusions, it rises again to reveal the handsome figure of our leading baritone, James Wallington. Thank you, Dean. And now here's something of interest to everybody. For breathless moments, for your breathless moments... Chew dentine, the gum with... <gasps> breathtaking flavor. Dentine tastes so good. Dentine freshens your breath. Dentine helps keep your teeth sparkling clean and white. Dentine, the gum with... <gasps> breathtaking flavor. Before you go out and always after eating, drinking, smoking, refresh your breath with dentine. You'll love dentine chewing gum, for dentine has a wonderful tingling, nippy flavor that lingers on and on. It's delicious. And remember, dentine helps keep your teeth white, too. Keep dentine handy. You'll enjoy refreshing your breath when you chew dentine. So, for breathless moments, for your breathless moments... Chew dentine, the gum with <gasps> breathtaking flavor. A few nights ago, I was sitting around the house looking through my old high school yearbook. One picture of the high school prom brought me back to a real painful memory. I had managed to get a date with the bell of the school, and I was pretty proud. I didn't get to dance too many dances with her because I had to get up on the stand every so often and sing a number. After one dance, I turned to throw her a kiss before I started to sing. But she didn't catch it. She was too busy kissing the captain of the football team. Well, it was a pretty sad student who sang that song, and the lyrics sure did fit the situation. So, Richard, a little memory music. You've got me crying again you got me sighing again What is this love all about? I'm in and I'm out 
your kisses right from the start Came from your lips, not your heart You make me happy And then Somebody new Looks good to you You got me crying again Just crying for you Trouble, Jay. Well, I was the hero tonight, and I won a girl. I never won a girl before. Hi, right, boys. What's the discussion about? Well, Jerry's a little worried. He says he won you tonight, and he doesn't know what to do about it. My, he is a young one, isn't he? <laughs> you know, Joan, you're really very hilarious. I noticed tonight on the show you said all those funny things, and you made the faces, and everybody laughed, and, and it's terrific, you know, because I'm the comedian on the show, and you come on as a guest, and, and you make everyone laugh. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do it no more. <laughs> Don't mind him, Joan. It was really swell of you to join us tonight. You've been a great sport, Joan, and please come back real soon. I sure will. Night, fellas. Good night, night Joan. Joan. And so, folks, hope to see you all again next week. Until then, this is Dean Martin. And Jerry Lewis reminding you that we appear on radio through the courtesy of Hal Wallace Productions, producers of our soon-to-be-released picture... Sailor beware. Good night, folks. Night, everybody. From Hollywood, you have just heard transcribed the Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis show, written by Ed Simmons and Norman Lear, produced and directed by Dick Mack, with music under the direction of Dick Stabile, brought to you by Chesterfield. Sound off for Chesterfield. Get something new, something no other cigarette has. Chesterfield mildness, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. By Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. And by Dentine, the gum with breathtaking flavor. And Beeman's Pepsin, the gum that's great to chew and good for your digestion, too. Joan Davis will soon be seen starring in the Columbia picture, Harem Girl. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.